just want everyone to know right off the bat that there's nothing wrong with the video portion of your viewing here. For some reason, I couldn't find the video of this debate between Konstantin Kissin and Ash Sarkar, who is an avowed communist and socialist, as you probably know. All I could find was somebody put something up there where the audio is mixed in with some still pictures. So with that being said, everything is fine. You're going to love this debate. It's a really, really good one. So let's get to it, and we're going to go to it right now. Our first witness is Konstantin Kissin, who's a Russian-born satirist, podcaster, commentator, author of An Immigrant's Love Letter to the West. Um, you're in love with us because of our notions of individual freedom, which, by the way, you think we're a bit dangerously complacent about. Why is individual freedom so much more important than collective freedom, security, prosperity, well-being? It's the bedrock of the success of the West. It's the very thing that defines Western civilization against all others. And we've had, uh, we talk always about it as a word. The easiest way to understand freedom is to experience a lack of it. Uh, I grew up so in the true. late Soviet Union with stories of my parents and grandparents being sent to the gulag for things that they said or decisions they made. And so I think the easiest way to understand freedom is to understand what it's like not to have it. And that's where my concern about the direction we're traveling in now comes from because we're in a position where we punish people for the things that they say uh, and we do this because we've That's conflated so words and speech with physical actions like violence. Um, and this is quite a deliberate uh, swapping of meaning in my opinion, which then allows people to suppress opinions that they don't like in order to advance their own cause. Ash, Ash Sarkar? If I were to leap across the stage and tackle you to the ground, that would be an unacceptable curtailment of your freedom. It's right? quite enjoyable, though. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some people would pay very good money for it. That's my point. Um, but let's, let's say you're, you were in a violent frenzy. You were chucking chairs around. It would be acceptable for me to curtail your freedom in order to prevent harm to others. Yes. Right. What so does that have to do with anything? Let's take a more passive example. Let's say I have a fridge full of food and you oh, are starving. Oh, here we go, folks. And I don't want to give it to you. Should we be able to curtail my property rights? Absolutely not. In order not. that you might have the right no. to live, the freedom to live? No. So you want to take someone else's property in order to execute your belief in what I'm saying you. I'm saying you are starving and I've got a fridge full of food. Yes. And I don't want to give it to you. Should someone be able to make me give it to you? No. 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 Even though you would die? Yes. yes. You would starve to death? Yes. Because I believe in property rights. Do you have a front door in your house? I do have a there front door. There are people who are homeless. Why don't you let them into your home? Oh, I would nice, say that nice. Property rights can and should be curtailed in order that others might live. So someone might freeze to death Virtue should they be signaling. forcefully entered into your home? I think if someone home. was freezing to death on my door, I would have a moral duty to let them in. A moral duty is a different thing. You're talking about compelling someone through violence. Right, you're threatening somebody with violence for not doing something you don't want done. So it's always right. violent to yes. compel Absolutely. someone to share yes. violence when they've got too much. Violence, yeah. But how can you meaningfully be free if you are starving to death? How can a hungry man meaningfully be said to have freedom? I, I don't understand. What is the lack of freedom there? If you're yeah. starving, how are you free? If you're starving, how are you unfree? Because you cannot exercise your freedoms, you cannot participate in a community of people, you cannot exercise your political rights because you are dying. So freedom means being able to do things because other people have provided them for you, is that what you mean? I'm saying that freedom means that you are able to act on your human capacity for reason, for critical engagement, well, to participate in a political community, and you can't do that. <coughs> you can't do that. It's a very You're strange dying. argument. As someone who slept in a park for weeks and did go hungry, I don't think I felt any less free. I was just hungry. These, <laughs> these are different things. You, you think that, uh, that it's possible to participate as a meaningful political agent if you are on the verge of death? I mean, I'll be honest with you, when I was going hungry and you know, the first thing here is, is that if you're on the verge of starvation, if you're on the verge of death, the last thing you're concerning about is your freedom, your rights. All you're concerned about is trying to get better or trying to get food. This, this, this whole thing is just, this is how the left operates, folks. This is unfortunately what you have to play with when you're playing with people like Ash Sarkar, who's an avowed socialist, avowed communist, this is the stuff they bring up. It has nothing to do with the real situation at all. 
It's just a fact of trying to get emotions to get forward, to try to, you know, prey on your goodness, to try to prey on your feelings, your capacity to have empathy. They go, oh, you can't be a good person. If somebody's got food and they're not giving it to a starving person, is that, are you really free then? I mean, this is the stupidity of the argument, folks. The moronicity, the retardedness, the idiocy. But they continue to go that way. Why? Because it makes them virtue signaling, social justice warrior. They polish that halo nice and bright. And they can virtue signal then from their perch, looking down at everybody else, never doing a damn thing that they basically say. Ashtar Carr is never going to invite a stranger into her home. You think she, two, three in the morning, somebody knocks on her door and says, I need a place to stay overnight. Some random guy. She's going to invite him into her home, into her apartment. Bull crap. I call bullshit. <laughs> Anyways, let's continue. Sleeping in a park, participating in the political system wasn't my main priority. But There you go. <laughs> I didn't feel unfree. I felt poor and hungry and homeless. This is not connected to freedom in any way. No, well, let's, it is let's, not. What you're talking about is you want to enforce on other people your wishes on how they should act in relation to property that they've accumulated, right? That's what you, you want the power to tell other people what to do with their property. You see how the left, you see how they play this game? You see how Ash is utilizing words? The words are deliberately done to manipulate the conversation to manipulate aware, not only with the spoken word, but to manipulate up here at the emotional level. They're tugging at that emotional shit because most people, as soon as you hear starving man, starving person, starving children, starving families, most normal people start to imagine because they know either that feeling or they've seen it before or they can associate their emotions with that. And then now the emotions start to get tugged. It's a tug of war. And basically saying, has nothing to do with freedom. But people, what, and you equate it that way, people go, yeah, you know, well, maybe, I mean, you should. Okay, there's a difference between shoulda, woulda, coulda. It's a difference. People may say all kinds of, you know, you may not give that food, but that is your right to not give it. And you know what? You may be called all kinds of names in the book. Greedy, can't believe he did that or they did that. They don't have any feelings. What type of people are they who raised them? Don't they have any common decency? Don't they have any humanity? Okay, all those things may be true. But what does that mean? Every time something like this happens, somebody can come in and force you to give against your will? We're talking about food. What about your home? You got four bedrooms. You had three children. Three children have gone. School, college got their job, got their families, you're still living in the house, you and your wife, or by yourself. But let's say you and your wife, you got three empty bedrooms. It's a lot of need for people, a lot of need for housing, a lot of need for housing. People say, hey, you got to house these illegals, these migrants. We don't know anything about them, these 19, 20, 22-year-old males. We don't know who they are, where they came from. What's going on with them? You got three bedrooms. You're not using them anymore. Can they force you? That's what Ash is saying. Not out of compassion, not out of your own free will, but that the state or the municipality or the community or somebody there, and that, how would that be done? Through violence, through coercion. They would be committing violence upon you and your home by forcing those people into your home. That's what this is about, folks. 
That's the difference. But they will equate freedom with like lack of food, lack of housing, lack of clothing, lack of this, lack of that. How is a person supposed to be free in a society if he doesn't have any clothes or food? They don't care about that. They don't care about their freedom. They care about getting the clothes, getting the food. Once they have that and they're established a little bit, maybe then they can discuss about being free. Anyways, folks, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, we'd love for you to subscribe to the channel. You all know what to do. Hit that subscription button if you like our content. Take a look at our other videos here and below. Put your comments. Share them with others. My final thought is always, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.